the head of the research group, he got to ask on the train if someone, like somebody asked him if he could buy his shirt for a fiver. My name is Antonia, and I work at an institute where DNA was discovered, the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. So I work as a research assistant in a transgenic facility, and my research group, extended research group, works on asthma and allergy. But today, I am with the research group that works on viruses. And we're, today we're exhibiting uh, what, what, we, what we've been doing in the lab to young people and inspiring them to get involved with science, let them know what we've been doing. And we're really excited about how excited they, and, and really well that they're receiving the information. So what is a virus? Well, let me show you. I have a model here to demonstrate. It's basically a protein shell, and inside it contains information, the DNA, of how to assemble a virus. But some people would say a virus isn't living. That's because it cannot actually reproduce by itself. It needs to hack a cell. That's why it infects hosts and uses the cell machinery in order to create the different parts and assemble itself within that cell. And when a virus grows, at least 10,000 of them will grow at le and lies the cell in order to infect others. Now, we don't have that cold forever. Somehow our bodies manage to get rid of this virus and we recover. When the virus enters, there are antibodies running around inside of our blood. There are many different types and antibody with the right shape will be able to bind our virus. Now, like this. Now, I'm gonna try and attach several antibodies. Oops, that one fell, but that's intentional, that's okay. Because if you, if you look closely, this antibody this antibody has the shape of a pentagon and it's not quite smooth like this one that is able to stick. And that's because the shape will determine what can bind. Great, so when antibodies bind to a virus, this basically tells your immune system that this is an invader and we need to get rid of it. So these white blood cells come along and they en envelop that virus, they, en they engulf it and digest it to break it down. But sometimes the viruses escape from our blood and get inside of our cells. And scientists didn't know what was happening inside cells. Um, when the virus enters in terms of how it can be eliminated. Leo James's group have shown though that there's this molecule called TRIM21 which can bind this tip of the, this molecule, the antibody right here, and this basically sends this, this virus to the cell's recycling system, so it breaks it down. So that's really great and potentially can be used for, you know, considering how future therapies can be developed. I became interested in science while studying an undergraduate degree in in biomedical science at King's College London. I quite, I quite like sciences at GCSC, but it was actually getting involved in how, thinking about how things can be solved, problems, and looking for history of how scientists have come up with theories and ideas about the self experiment um, problems that we, we, we face every day. Something that surprised me about the science experience in particular is the actual working in a research lab, that the, the, what you notice is that scientists are, are curious, but this curiosity sometimes isn't, isn't learned about, isn't taught in schools. You just learn a lot of the facts because you know you need to pass your exams, right? But this, it, this research is actually driven by a lot of curiosity and just coming up with ideas of how to test your, your curiosity. And that's, that's really fascinating and interesting. It, it, it leaves room for a lot of creativity. For all you guys who want to get involved in science, get involved, get, organize your work experience in a lab, see what it's like, o go to an open day, talk to scientists, I'm sure they're more than willing to tell you about what they do, and there's so much available for you to, to study. It's all there. Come and check it out.